What is your American dream? My background is Jamaican. My American dream is to be successful regardless of my race, attitude, or for simply being me. I'm Honduran and my American dream is freedom. Freedom to do whatever I want to do. I'm from Jersey City, New Jersey, and my American dream is always being able to fight for what I believe in. My parents are from Haiti. My American dream is equal opportunity and access to a great quality education. My family is from Belize, and my American dream is to inspire others and provoke change through the art of my filmmaking. My family is from Pakistan, but I was born and raised here in New York, and my American dream is to take advantage of all the opportunity that I've been given here. Everyone has a right to the American dream. Well, Sparring Bernstein has been nothing but great to me throughout my trials. I mean, it's five years into this car accident and um, they never gave up on me, never. And in everything, they fought for me. And I am so proud to tell everyone, don't even wink for a moment. See you, Sparring Bernstein. My, my lawyer here, Mr. Barack, has been a cage animal. He wanted to go on trial, but thank God we settled out of court and it was something that I'm very, very happy about. So everyone, I'm telling you, I'm not just making stories up. You have to use this law firm. Spar and Bernstein is the best, worldwide best. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. What do you call me, Mr. Judaica? No, it's a new day, it's a new dawn. <laughs> I have a little That's problem right. in my ear. Excuse me. <laughs> I thought you called me Mr. Judaica. I'm like, what? why am I Mr. <laughs> Judaica? It's too early in the year to start with names and yes. the elf and all of that stuff. Yes. Do something fresh, something new. Yes. Welcome to the Bradley Squeeze Show, man. It's good to be here. Yes. You are back from uh, prior duties yesterday. You're okay now and everything is good. Yeah. Well, dude is in the stomach. <laughs> <laughs> but you were That's down. You were down. You were down in Jamaica. You were down in Jamaica for Shaggy and Friends. You're coming back up today, this afternoon, to join me here in the cold in New York. Why don't you tell everybody it was for a great cause? By the way, did you tell Shaggy that Spartan Bernstein donated eighteen hundred dollars to the cause? Does he yes, know that? Yes, I did. He knows. That. As a matter of fact, um, we are going to have him on the um, show. Hopefully next week, or you know, to oh. get everything together. He will bring us up to speed as to what they did, how they did, and the whole nine yards. I thought it would be more professional yes. to actually have him that would come be nice. and thank everybody. Right. And, that would you be know. very nice. So, yes. tell Jill I got this. Okay, all right? well, you got but it. You got it. As, so tell, so, as as so tell show, us about the weekend. Tell us about the weekend. Who'd you hang out with? As, and you have as pictures. Far as being at the show, yeah. As far as being at the show, it was a phenomenal show. Probably one of the best shows I have ever been to in Jamaica. Well put together, the production was fabulous. Nothing short of perfection. Sting did a magnificent job. It was so great to see the entire island come together and just you know appreciate his music. He ripped it. That's as much as did, I can did say. He, I, did I want he to use play old police here. music, or did he play more of his uh, oh. modern stuff with, without the police, or a combination? A bit of both. A little both. A bit of a combination. Yeah. Yes, and even. Shaggy performed with him. He had a right. few other people that came on stage with him. So it was really good, man. And um, we'll have better highlights, more highlights when Shaggy comes on. I don't want to burst his bubble. Can, can you, know? you have like any pictures or anything to show us? Um, yeah, I have a few, but I have stuff that's coming from the archives, of Shaggy's archives, which is much better. Okay, fine. None of these, you know. There I mean, you there's are. a couple right there. There you are. I mean, Who's that? Yeah, what? That's Shike, that's, uh, Mike uh, Left, right? Yeah. And yeah. Shaggy. That's cool. Dude, and check. Yeah. yeah, he rolled up. He rolled. He rolled up in my boots like yo, squeeze. Oh, this, or something, this thing and uh, and Shaggy. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. See, Jill had to. Jill had to go pull the pictures, but yeah. I didn't want to pull the pictures. Right. You know. You know. But um, yeah, Shaggy even um took Sting to the hospital so he could actually see, see the hospital that right. you know we're working and all of that. But everyone was very. They had a great. How show. was the? How was more importantly? How was the after party? Oh, the after party was. Spectacular. You're breaking up. He breaks up just as when, just, you as when it. just as when the after party. Let, let's hear about the after party. 
No, the after party was great. You know, we went to Fiction Nightclub and then we had a, a, a yak party the day after. A lot of hard work, you know, a lot of very, real very, hard work. Very, yes, yes. Now I, know, <laughs> now I know why you weren't around yesterday. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. So you know, uh, while you well, were... Happened, well, happened, yeah, what's, what's going on? I heard we have a new social media we, guru. We do have Anna. A, a, yeah, Anna Escona. She's awesome. She's, uh, she's going to join us a little bit later. I'll introduce you to her when she comes. But uh, other, uh, uh, you know, we still have social media queen. She's still around, but there's Anna. And uh, she's going to be joining yes. us to answer all of your immigration. Not, she's not going to answer. She's going to ask all of the immigration questions on Facebook. So please make sure you leave all your immigration questions on Facebook. Uh, we're joined by Squeeze in Jamaica. He is going to be catching a plane this afternoon. He's going to be joining us back in the studio tomorrow. Is that correct, Mr. Squeeze? Hey, you never know. You might catch me in the airport. You may catch me in the airport. <laughs> you don't know. But at some, point, at some point in 2018, okay, can we I'll make, be in the studio. you will be in the studio at some point in the year 2018. We have Anna. Careful. Anna's in Miami. It's amazing what we can do here at the Brad and Squeeze Show. Squeeze is in Jamaica. Anna's in Miami. And I'm the moron freezing my, my you-know-what off here in New York. Well, but somebody, well, you know what? But somebody's got to do it. Well, you know what, Brad? I might catch up with Anna in Miami because I'm going to be there for a four-hour layover. Ah, so that you, you should go meet her. Yeah, so maybe I'll have Starbucks. That you, by the way, for 2018, you got to cut the Starbucks rations in half. Why? I saw the big cup that you brought in. Mm-hmm. And you poured it in a Brad and Squeeze cup. That is correct. That All is right, correct. So, you know, because as Starbucks, my friend, I'm cutting your rations in half. Starbucks, let me explain something to you. They yeah. are legal drug dealers. I am telling you this, okay? Because <laughs> yes, we got, are. I wake up in the morning, I am, it's like I, if I don't walk in there, I go to another coffee shop, it doesn't have the same caffeine fix for me. I have to go into Starbucks and people are there. It's like almost, uh, you know, a, a, you know a, a methane clinic, you know, like where they have all like the addicts coming in and they look like all haggard and everything and everybody's online and nobody's talking and they're all just angry and tired and then they get their coffee and they walk out smiling. It's like, I am telling you, good, yep. it's Starbucks. There is no question of, I mean, obviously caffeine does give you some sort of high, obviously. And I believe it is legal. That guy, what's his name who owns Starbucks? Um, uh, boy, I forgot his name now all of a sudden. Um, that guy, he's smart. He's selling legal drugs. I'm telling you, because yep. I can't, I can't live without it. I can't live without it. Do you, that's, do Howard you think 10 Schultz, years from thank now, you. Yeah, Howard Schultz. Yeah, do, you think, do you think 10 years from now we'll have like a, a weed shop like in Amsterdam also? They, you, you may, you may, you may have it. You may have it. Mike Tyson is ahead of the game there on that. And, and you want to know what Starbucks is really good at? I'm going to tell you what they're what? really good at, Squeeze. They they teach their staff to remember their regular customers. Okay? It's, they teach it. I know it. So every time I walk in, it's like I'm Norm from Cheers. Remember that? Like, hey, Norm, how are you? You walk hey, in. Hey, I'm Brad. Brad. Brad, everybody. Brad, Brad. You, it's, like, it's like you're home, and they're giving you coffee, and they make you feel better. How could you go anywhere else, you know? You can't cut out That's Starbucks. True. You can't cut yep. it out. It's remind, it reminds me of a place that has four seasons. <laughs> <laughs> meanwhile, did you catch well, anyway. meanwhile did you catch the Golden Globes? At the Golden Globes. Oh, yeah. What at, do you think? At, uh, I think everybody wants Oprah to run for president. That's what I think. Um, you know, I think, you know, they 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 I, I don't think Michelle Obama wants it. Okay, and I think it would be awesome to have a woman of color. Be the, be the first woman and a woman of color to be president of the United States. I'm all in favor of Michelle. I'm all in favor of Oprah. You know, listen, Donald Trump, what was his qualifications? Nothing. He was famous. I mean, at least Oprah has a social conscious, conscience. Yes. So I, I know she has that going for her over, and she's a smart lady, and she has a social conscience. So she has that going over the guy in the White House right now who is also famous, who has no social conscience, and uh, according to the most recent book, is a moron. So uh, yeah. I'm all in favor. I'm all in favor of uh, Oprah becoming president of the United of States. Uh, we have an Oprah video. Let me see the Oprah video. What is the Oprah video? I don't even know what it is. Look at this. Jill is on top yeah, where, of it. Where she was okay, speaking. she didn't even know I was going to be yeah. talking about Oprah. 
You don't need government experience to be elected president of the United that's States, what I right? I thought, oh, gee, I don't have the experience. I don't know enough. I don't know. And now I'm thinking, oh. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> there it She's is. She's funny. And Jill. She's and, also funny. And Jill, Jill is running to be like the uh, Secretary of State because she didn't even know we were going to be talking about Oprah. And boom, she pulled that one up. She pulled that one up. Jill is our producer, right. by the and way. And by the way, and by the way, I don't know if you can pull this one up or not, Jill. I saw on CNN. I saw on CNN. I'm going to give her a minute to go look for it on CNN. I saw on CNN Donald Trump in 1999 or 2000. I don't know, like a long time ago, 1999 maybe, right. said that he believes that Oprah would be the best vice president if he were to run for president. Okay. Instead, oh, really? Instead, he did you see that? Did you ever see that? Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. You have a no, vice the part about him saying. Yeah, all right. I think. Well, I really haven't gotten quite there yet. Uh, it's I about, guess it's just, you Oprah, always. I love Oprah. Oprah would always be my first choice. Oprah. Uh, Oprah. Do you know the only thing that looks the same is his hair? It's amazing. <laughs> I see. It I, never moves. It looks moves. like a different human being, but the hair is exactly the same. It's crazy. So he wanted, he wanted Oprah to be his vice president 20 years ago. Wouldn't that be great? Oprah versus. That would be very interesting. Very interesting. Very interesting. Yes. Yes. Someone would be overshadowed. Yes. That would be that would, big how would and how would you be able to insult Oprah? You know, how would you get away, you know, like how he insulted everybody? Yeah. You know, you can't. How, how is it, he gonna insult Oprah? How do you do that? Yeah, you can't. Right? You know, like she he's would, like, you know, like this she, was crooked Hillary and this was yeah, you know, it, I don't know, uh whatever he called the guy for the senator from t Texas, uh, you know, lying, whatever the guy's name was. Everybody had a name. Okay, well, right, how right. did you call Oprah a name? I think she would be great. You can't. You can't. All right. So what else is in the news? What else is in the news? Immigration questions yeah. are in the news, Squeeze. Oh, by the oh, way, we're still by doing the that? Way, yes, by the way, I do want to talk about what's immigration, what's going on in immigration in the news. By the way, California, quickly, I want to, I want to let everybody mm -hmm. know, California just passed a, passed a law uh, that protects every, the entire state passed a law protecting undocumented immigrants. If you're living in California, you have a little bit more protection than you had just a few days ago. It's called the California Values Act, SB 54, and it requires that federal immigration officials provide a warrant to access workplaces and employee records. It also prevents local police from participating in any immigration raids or it also and not or and it also prevents local police from asking residents about their immigration status during any type of stop. It also prevents landlords from revealing tenants immigration statuses to the federal government. Uh, in California, they say one in 10 workers is undocumented. Approximately more than 3 million undocumented aliens living in California. They are paying over $3 billion in state and local taxes. They contribute $180 billion to the California economy. And more than 53% of the voting residents of California are in favor of this bill. Congratulations, California, doing something Good. for, for Good people who, who need help. Uh, on the downside, on the downside squeeze, uh, Donald Trump has mm -hmm. given everybody from El Salvador one year to get the hell out of this country or, or God knows what. He is He'll ending TPS, right. temporary protected status for all El Salvadorians from two different earthquakes that ravished the country uh, back in 2001. They have been working here legally for over uh, 18 years, contributing to the economy, buying homes, paying taxes, doing the right thing. And then after they lay their roots down here and after they have a family here and US citizen children here and start businesses and are very that. loyal employees, he says, ah, get the hell out. So you know what's gonna happen, Squeeze? Sounds like Donald. You know what's gonna Sounds happen, like Squeeze? Trump. They're not gonna get out. What's that? Okay, if you, have, if you have your home here, and you have your job here, and your children are in school here, and you've laid your roots down here, why are you going back to El Salvador? There's nothing there for you. They're not gonna go home. All Donald Trump is doing is exacerbating the problem by now making more people illegal, by not being able to track and follow who's here in the United States, 
uh, by pushing more people underground, which is the exact opposite of what he's campaigning for. Yes. Stupid ass. That's what I got to so, say. Sounds like Dunno. That's what I got to say. All right, so listen. Yeah. Let me do something that's very important. Sure. I want to remind everyone that, yes, this is a TV show that is on social media. It's also on the radio, all right? So you can call it a radio show also. But right now, we pontificate that word came back this year, okay? The Brad and Squeeze page. I want every single person that is watching us to share this show on 20 of your friends' page after you share it on your own timeline. So spend the next 60 seconds just sharing it on 20 of your friends' page, 20 of your friends that you think would be interested in hearing what Brad has to say, I have to say, and also you can place your questions on immigration on the page itself, and our social media queen, guru, whatever you want to call her right now, Anna, will actually read those questions off later on for the rapid we, fire we, we segment don't right have, here. We don't have a nickname for Anna yet. I told Jill it'll just, it'll happen it's going to it happen. Will happen. It's yeah. going to happen naturally as we go along on the show. We just don't know what it is. And just for, yeah. uh, we'll we'll explain to Anna when she comes on the the uh, the history of all of our social media people and their names that they had. I think it'll be an interesting conversation we have with her. Let's go to immigration and squeeze. I know you just asked everybody to to follow us on Brad and Squeeze, and I want everyone to also share share this page yep. right now. Take your thumb or your finger out, share it onto your timeline, let everybody know that we're gonna be answering your immigration questions right now. And obviously you can call 1-800-529-5465. Before we go to 1-800-529-5465, Tamika Squeeze wants to know why you are still in Jamaica. She was able to make it back to New York. Squeeze. Okay, if she can get, if she can get me a flight immediately or could have, I would have been there already. You would have been here. I have never seen it. I have never seen it. Squeeze is, breaking, yes. squeeze is breaking up a little bit here. So let's go to, he claims he right. can't get on an airplane. That's his claim. He broke up. That's the claim. 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 The are, claim. You ever gonna, are you going to be on my side in 2018, man? Yes, I will. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> repeating what you're saying. All right. 1-800-529-5465. 1-800-LAWLEG. That's the line. Call us now. We're ready to take your immigration questions. Let's go to this slide. Hello. We got Rico from Fort Lauderdale, Squeeze. Hey, Rico. Hey, how you doing, Squeeze? Hey, what's up, man? I'm good. All right, say hi to Brad. He's the one to answer the question. Hey, Brad, how you doing? Happy what's New up? Year. Happy New Year. What's going on, Rico? Yeah, I'm good. Um, well, um, my question is, you know, um, last year I went to do my interview, and um, while in the interview, you know, everything went well until at the end of the interview, they asked me if I was involved in, you know, the Jamaica lottery scam. And I was like, no, where's all what this ja question what coming Jamaican from? Jamaican lottery scam are we talking about? The lottery scam happening in Jamaica. They asked me about that. Do you know about, I so, don't know what, I don't know what the, squeeze, do you know what the Jamaica, I don't, honestly, I don't know. What is the Jamaica lottery scam? Do you know what that is, squeeze? <laughs> they have a okay. scheme where they defraud um, American citizens here. They defraud, the oh yeah. They, wait, wait, what happens? Oh yeah. What happens? Yeah. That, that's huge. That's pretty huge. Um, where a lot of uh, Jamaicans, okay, are actually defrauding people in the United States of America. How? Um, by calling them, telling them that they win the lottery. Uh-huh. And they should wire money to them. It's been happening. It's been all over the news if you're, over, if, for the past if, few if years now. If you are that big of enough fool to have somebody call and say, hey, you won the lottery, send me money, then you deserve <laughs> you deserve to lose your money. That's my two cents on the, on the, on the thing. And, in and, any event, and, yeah. Why did they think that you, why did they think that you were part of this? That's, that's the thing. I don't know where that coming from. So, um, you know, I got a lawyer on it, on it now and, you know, she's dealing, dealing with it and stuff. And then, you know, we got an update that, you know, HSI is doing a background investigation on me. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if I wasn't vetted and background check before I went into the interview. So why am I having another one done on you? Because obviously um, they were not able to determine, I assume, they weren't able to determine if you were the person, you were the Rico guy. I don't know if the, obviously Rico may be your name or may not be your name, whatever it is. But if you were mm -hmm. the guy or somebody else, I mean, sometimes investigations take longer than, than, you know, the process of going for an interview because the process of going for an interview, it's like a conveyor belt. The conveyor belt just keeps moving. 
okay? And oh, okay. from the time that you get your, file your papers, the conveyor belt moves, and now the conveyor belt's at the end, you get an interview. And then the officer looks at the file and says, wow, this investigation isn't complete yet. We don't know whether this guy is part of the lottery or not. So, <laughs> so that's what happened, I assume. Oh, okay. All right. But, you know, it was funny because, you know, my name came up and I was like, what? Right. You know, I was shocked in the How in long the has thing, it been so. since your interview? How long has it been? Um, it was May last year, so. All right, so it's been, you know. so you're now going on eight, nine months. These are, just so you understand, I mean, you, you know, you're kind of beholden to the system. Um, you really have two options. You have two options mm -hmm. on what to do. You can sit back well you have three options you can sit back and wait and let let the investigation play itself out but who knows how long that will be it could be years they mm -hmm. could just literally sit on it and never make a decision number two you can harass the crap out of them which i assume what your what your attorney is doing because and your attorney yes. by the way you know or any attorney they can't they can't you know make you know you know provide evidence how do you provide a negative how do you provide i'm not part of it you can't you can't prove a negative. So all the attorney right. can do is push them to make a decision. And if they actually have evidence that you're part of this lottery scheme or whatever it is, they would have to present it in, in, a, in a decision. Um, and, then you, and then you react to it that way. Or, or if you know, the, the harassing to make a decision doesn't happen, your, your third choice would be to file what's called a mandamus action, which is a federal lawsuit uh, in federal court in Miami or wherever you are in Fort Lauderdale. Um, and you demand a federal judge to make an order to the immigration service that they have 90 days to make a decision. Oh, and, okay. And then they have right. to make a decision, yes or no. So, so the demand in federal court is not to give you a green card. The demand is make a decision, and, if the de and you, you feel pretty confident that you're not part of this, so there shouldn't be any evidence, there shouldn't be any evidence that you are part of this so then you know hopefully they will make a decision in the positive if they make a decision in the negative well then you get put in deportation and then you fight it out they have to present evidence to deport you that you're part of this otherwise the judge has to give you a green card okay okay because here's the thing i've never been arrested i've never just you know, because been... you were never arrested doesn't mean by by hmm. by you know logic that you're not part of this you know right um <clears throat> There's lots of people who've is, never been arrested who are doing bad stuff. I'm not saying you're doing anything right. bad, though. Right, I understand. Right. But I'm right. saying, like, I've never, you know, been involved in anything like that or, you know, being then, arrested then, or then you have, any problem then with then the law. what you should be doing, if you are 100% confident this has nothing to do with you, then mm -hmm. what you should be doing is filing a mandamus action in federal court because you know they got nothing on you. Right. Right. That's what I would be doing. Mariko, I want you to hold the line. Maybe we can help you yeah. here. Hold as on one second. Speed, all right? Hold on. So, one second. All right, 1-800-529-5465. 1-800-529-5465. This is the Brad and Squeak Show. Let's um, go to another call right here. 1-800-L-A-W-L-I-N-K. Oh, there's Squeeze. Okay, Tracy. Yes, um, Brad and Squeeze. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? A pleasant good morning I'm, to you, too. I'm doing okay. Anyway, my question is... Um, I filed my paperwork on the 29th of November of this year. But when I went to file my paper, um, the lady who doing the filing of the document told me my husband's income was insufficient to file for me. Okay. I have to get a sponsor. Okay. So I go ahead and ask my sister, and she do up an affidavit. Okay. So However, so, so, I got so back a reply so from him. However, I got back a reply from immigration, a letter from my husband and two for me. Then later on, they sent me a biometric, which was supposed to be done on the third. I went and I did it. Yesterday, I was here and I got a letter from them stating, I-485 application re-registration permit residence. They're asking for additional information. Down the line, they asked for a okay, petition. Okay, so, so let, me, let, me explain, let, me explain, let me explain something. Whatever you hmm. filed with immigration was done incorrectly. Either you, either you completed the applications wrong, you didn't submit the right documentation, you didn't fill it out correctly, you didn't submit the right applications. I don't know. But when you get something back like that, that means you did something wrong or the person who helped you did something wrong. 
Now, right, it can be, didn't now, get it. Okay, yeah. now, it no, can be there. fixed, but the problem is you want your work permit. You want to become legal. You want to get your interview for your green card. Everything is on hold until you fix this. And then once you no, fix but the it, next let, thing, let, let me finish my sentence. And then once you yeah. fix it, you're at the back of the line again. It's like you're starting from scratch. So you got to fix uh -huh. it. You got to fix it properly. You're not going to get your work permit. You're not going to get anything. And then once you fix it, once you fix it, then wait 120 days for your work permit and then wait another nine months for your interview. So basically, oh. you're on hold at the back of the line right now. Okay, but the next thing, right? Yeah. The next thing in the letter, sorry, they're asking for the petition slash sponsors. Okay, they need Tracy, a job and a pay stub and all Tracy, Tracy, <laughs> Tracy, you didn't do yes, it right. Sir. So you reading off a letter to me, I'm going to say you did it wrong. Right. Hold on one second. You need help, okay? Hold on one second. Hold on. Once again, 1-800-529-5465, 1-800-LAWLINK. It's coming up in 29 minutes after the hour. I want to say thanks to our partners over at usacreditrepairinc.com. We're going to be getting to Anna, our social media queen, lady, we'll whatever you want to call her. We don't have a name for her we'll yet. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. We have Byron from the Bronx, and after Byron from the Bronx, we're going to go to Anna... Uh, doing our social media, so please leave your questions on Facebook. Byron. Anna in Miami. Yes. Good morning. Morning, Byron. Good morning, guys. How are you? Hey, good I'm morning, fine, man. thanks. You guys, I want to ask a quick question. Yeah. For someone who had a green card, right, how long can they stay out of the U.S. for? For the rest of their life, but you won't be able to ever come back again. Um, but if you want to be able to maintain your green card, you can't stay out for more than, uh, you have to be permanently in the United States more than you are somewhere else, okay? So there's no, you know, if you're going to stay out for more than six months, you have a problem. If you're going to stay out for five and a half months, come back to the United States for a week, stay out for five and a half months, come back to the United States for a week, guess what? You're not permanently living in the United States, they're gonna stop you. So there's no fast and hard rule how long you can stay out. As long as you are more, more often in America than you are somewhere else. Now, with all that being said, if you have to stay out of the country for more than six months or you can't stay in America for that long period of time, uh, you can get what's called the reentry permit that allows you to stay out of the country for up to three years without losing your green card. Three years. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. All right. You, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Do you need help with that? Yeah, I think he does. Hold, hold on. on. And by the way, yeah, Squeeze, exactly. the telephone number, uh, I know you know this, but I don't know how many other people know this. The telephone number, which is 1-800-529-5465, that is the number to my law office. So if you want to make an appointment to come see us, it's the same telephone number as it is to get on our show, which is 1-800-529-5465. Now, now with that being said, Squeeze, let's find Anna Ascona, and let me introduce you to her, okay? You've never okay. met Anna before. This is the first time you will ever be talking to her. Hello! Yes. Hey guys! Hey, hello there, Anna. Now, Anna, I have to be a gentleman here and introduce you to Squeeze. You've never met him. You've never talked to him. This is like your first I've introduction on live <laughs> on live Facebook. Anna Escona, meet David Squeeze Attiky. David Squeeze Attiky, meet Anna. It's a Hi, pleasure to meet you, so Anna. Good to meet you. Now, Anna. Likewise. Now, Anna. Let me tell you a little I, bit. I want to say she has. Yeah, go ahead, yeah, Squeeze. She has really. She has really brightened up the screen. She really has. Now, let me tell you a little bit. Oh, yes. thank now, you. <laughs> now, let me tell you a little, little bit about David Squeeze Anarchy. He has been uh, a radio oh, host for the last 25 years on 93.5 FM here in New York. You are, you are a radio host down in Miami on La Musica. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So well, you I'm both, a you digital both have content. A lot, you, you both have a lot in a digital content, but you both have a lot in common. Yeah. You both started yeah. out you know, in the music industry and, and, and doing this. Squeeze did it the old-fashioned way on the radio. You, you do it more the updated way. But you have a lot, very much in common. You should be talking off the air about your war stories and everything. But yeah, as, my first gig... Yeah, go ahead. My first gig was actually um, in the city at 97.9 FM. Uh-huh, really? In New York. Uh-huh. Yeah. What'd you so, do there? I mean, I was... I was um, basically handling air checks doing right. behind the scenes stuff it was when i was still in school how long you've been down in miami i don't even know um two years two years but i, I moved from los angeles i was uh -huh. living in la for two years right. you like the warm and then, weather yeah but i kind of missed the up 
you know, right. up north well, maybe a little maybe, bit. Maybe you'll come out and hang out with us <laughs> Maybe, sometime. maybe. Okay. So, Squeeze, I want to run a little video. You don't mind? We, we ran a video yesterday. Anna has like a, like a thousand, I don't know, 10,000 videos on YouTube, whatever it is. So I want to just introduce Anna right. to you, Squeeze, see. and see a little bit of what Anna does, and then we're going to come back, and she's going to be uh, asking all kid. the all the immigration questions on, uh, on Facebook Live in our rapid fire round. Let's see what Anna does on YouTube. So the man greets me and asks me how's my day going. Then he randomly asked me if I had a boyfriend. What? I thought to myself like, oh, why is he asking me this? Y yo le dije que sí para no continuar la conversación. Pero para qué fue eso? The driver went on telling me how he's going through a divorce y que la mujer lo engañó con otro hombre, blah, 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 blah. O sea, my friend, I don't care. Entiendo que le estás pasando mal, pero yo no soy tu therapist para que me cuentes tus problemas because I can't console you. That's what real professional shrinks are for. Otra cosa que odio de los Uber drivers es cuando empiezan a coquetear contigo. ¿Quién te dijo a ti que tú me gustas? Do not ask for my number. This is not Desperate Housewives. I'm telling you, there's some crazy Uber drivers out there. Lastly, stop using those strong air fresheners thinking that it's going to block the odor in your car. I can't breathe. Ahí es cuando tengo que bajar la ventana antes de que me desmaye. Can I just get an Uber driver que me lleve donde tengo que ir en paz? Is that so much to ask for? Anyway, cuéntame usando el hashtag Ana Reclama cuál ha sido your strangest Uber experience. And if you're an Uber driver, tell me what you don't like that your passenger... Squeeze, don't ask for her wow. number. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Do not I ask, ask for her number, number. Oh, man. <laughs> I won't. But she's, but she's she got a lot of rant. energy. I like that. Yeah, she, she has a lot rant. of energy. Ask my number, Squeeze. Yeah, you know, I like that. I like that. <laughs> thank you, know? you, thank you. Thank you. All right, well, great. Welcome to the show. Um, it's good to have you. Thank I heard you. good things about you. I heard that you're doing wonders. So we're looking forward for a whole lot more in 2018. All right? And uh, thank you, thank you, uh, I want to see what the responses from Brad Squad and Team Squeeze has to say throughout the rest of the month. You know, they're very, very interesting teams that we have here. All right. So you ready for us? Well, I'm ready. I said, are you ready for us? You ready? Yes. I'm sorry. It sounds like there's like a delay right now in, in the audio. But yeah. yes, I, I am okay. ready. I'm excited. You know, I'm glad to be a part of this team. So I look forward to many great things. All right. So let's start the rapid fire. What do you got for us, Anna? Quick, quick. All right. Crystal Smith. Brad, I noticed there is no longer processing time available for DACA. Why is, why is that so? Because there is no more DACA. The, 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 so the last applications were due before October 5th. It's, it's done. You can't file anything now for DACA. Okay. okay, Antoinette, Next. approximately how long would it take for a spouse to get his green card in Jamaica after filing his papers after marriage after marrying a U.S. citizen? About a year. Annette, I filed for my spouse in August 2017 and did not get any reply. He feels I did not file, so he took my family to court claiming I abused him so he can use this to file for himself. Can you please explain how this process works? Well, he took your family to court? You don't take a family to court. I mean, you guess, I guess you get an order of protection or whatever. But basically how it works is this. If you're in a relationship, what the U.S. government doesn't want you to do, and this is the U.S. government from pre-Donald Trump. I'm sure Donald Trump would never have put this law in place. But it's a law that's been on the books for 25 years already. It's called the Violence Against Women's Act, but it also could be Violence Against Man's Act. It could be either one, but they call it Violence Against Women's Act, but it could be men or women uh, making that application. And the government doesn't want you to stay in a, in a, in a marriage where abuse there's physical or, yeah. or, or emotional abuse because you shouldn't have to be physically abused to get a green card. So if you can prove it's a real marriage and you can prove either extreme emotional abuse or physical abuse, you can leave that marriage go live somewhere else and still get your green card. So part of the process, presumably, to prove abuse is that you want the man or woman who's abusing you to stay away from you. You don't want to keep being abused if you leave, so you go to family court and you get orders of protection. There you go. 1-800-LAWLINK. Let's get to another one, Anna. Yeah. Punchy Dale. Good morning, Brad and Squeeze. If you, was request, if you request a letter for employment, from immigration and your husband is not working now, but have the pay stubs and tax papers. I'm assuming they're asking what should they do, but they didn't complete the question. Well, if your husband's not working and you're going, you're, 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 his past employment is no security to the immigration service that he's gonna support you moving forward. So you're gonna need a second affidavit support from someone else if your husband's not working. 
Jacqueline, my son is a green card card holder since 2015. He has a three-year-old son in Jamaica. Can he file for him? And how long will it take? About a year and a half. Yes. Annette responded to your answer and said, Brad, I took him to family court for an order of protection. That is why he returned the same process. Okay, so they had they had mutual orders of protection against each other. Yes. Okay, yeah. so That'd she's claiming she's claiming he's abusing her. He's claiming she's abusing him, and abusing it's for him. it's up for the judge to decide what's going on. Katrina Daniel, a friend's wife, came to the U.S. on a K-1 visa process. She left the U.S. before she received without advance parole, and before she got her green card, her green card has arrived. Before if she, she got if her she green left, card, it if she left the United States before the green card was issued, she abandons her permanent residence. That green card is no good. Casmita Ford, if a citizen wants to file for his wife, what form he has to file on? Thanks. Well, if the citizen, if the wife's in another country, it's an I-130. If the wife is here in America, it's an I-130 and I-45. Okay, Mercedes, can I petition my great nephew? No. All right, and those are the questions for now so okay. far. <laughs> I mean, but if your great nephew's in the United States and living with you, maybe you can do a SIG, maybe you can do an adoption, uh, some other things as well. So why don't we do this, Anna? Why don't you hang out, let people a ask some more questions. We're going to come back to you towards the end of the hour. Is that cool? Sounds good to me. Is that cool? Okay. Squeeze, right. anything else yeah. for Anna? By the way, Anna, before we leave, oh. I want you to know something, okay? You, you may be our first fourth or fifth social media person. The first person was Squeeze's son, okay? David Jr., right, Squeeze? He was our yep. first social media person. I just want to bring you through the history of where we got to you, okay? And we well, called I noticed him. you guys are looking for a nickname for Yes, me. we're looking for a nickname. <laughs> so, we called, so, we called, so we called him social, social media guy because he SMG. didn't want to. SMG, yes. because he was just social media guy. So then Kyle took over. Okay, and he didn't want to be known as a uh, social media guy because Squeeze was. Okay, so we called him social media guru, which he didn't like. So then he changed his name to strong manly guy. So he was the strong manly guy. Then Kim came along and we called her SMG and she didn't like to be strong manly guy because she's obviously not a guy. So then we called her strong, <laughs> we called her social media queen. And now we have Anna and, and Squeeze and I are like, what's Anna's name? We're like, we don't know yet. we got to figure it out. So maybe, yeah. you know. We have some brainstorming We have to, to do. do some brainstorming to do, but we'll come back to you, okay? By the what way, before you leave, I have two more questions oh, okay. that came in. Great. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So Katrina responded. She wants to know if she needs to report him to immigration. You could, you could report anybody you want to immigration. I doubt they'll do anything. And then Lovable Headlamp asks, is it okay to apply for school in the USA and receive a F1 as well as have an I-130 petition pending? Uh, you are not going to be able to get a student visa if you have an I-130 petition pending because a student visa is a non-immigrant visa, which means that you have to show that you show you have to show to get the student visa an intent to leave the country. You're not living here permanently. The fact that you have an I-130 pending for you is your intent to live here permanently. So those two kind of hit each other. They don't, they, don't, they don't mix well. So you can't, once the I-130 is filed, you can't do the student visa anymore. And Roseanne Miller asked, Brad, my daughter was under age 18 when I got my citizen. She has a USA passport now. How can she get the certificate? N-600. K. Sammy. Currently filing after spouse's citizenship is established. How long would it take for other spouse to get through? Wait, what? Currently filing, and they're doing yes. their citizenship, and now he wants to file for his spouse? Is that the yes, question? Yes, and they want to know how long. About, I, I about, believe so. About, they about know. nine months after you become a citizen, your spouse should be here in the United States. Or just status. And for now, that's it. And that is it. All <laughs> right, the extra, yes. the extra questions from Anna. Thank you very much, Anna. Unknown name yet? As Coda, we will, we will come. Anna, the up. unknown, the unknown, <laughs> the unknown social media guru. We don't, we don't know what the name is yet. We'll come up with it. Squeeze. You have anything well, else for Anna before out. we say goodbye to her? It's coming. I just wanted to remind people that she does speak Spanish. You know, so this way we can get a lot of yes. our, you know, Latin viewers involved you know yeah so you can ask your question so, in spanish you, I will, but you I definitely will, but, can but i will answer it in english because me me espanol yes. muy mal 
<laughs> Un piquito. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very small. All right, All no right thank you very right. much, Anne. Appreciate it. Squeeze. Si All right. it. Squeeze. There you, have it. there you got it. All right, so we there got to, it. So we got to uh, go to our Bradjication segment. Okay, we got a Bradjication set up. And it's all brought to you, empowered. The Brad Education segment is brought to you by USA Credit Repair. Let's see our Brad Education segment. Let's go there. Does your office work on issues other than immigration? We are a full service law firm for immigrants and Americans who are living in the United States. We handle every immigration matter in all 50 states. In addition to that, we have a very robust personal injury and construction accident department. If you are injured in an accident or a construction accident, Sparm Bernstein has had a lot of success getting lots of our clients large settlements for their injuries. We have a fabulous criminal defense department. We have criminal defense attorneys, prior assistant district attorneys, here to assist our clients to make sure that hopefully they are never convicted of a crime and if they're never convicted of a crime then they can never get deported. We have a fantastic matrimonial and family law department. We have a wonderful tax debt relief department. We are a full service law firm to handle all of your legal matters. By the way, Squeeze, uh, my beard in the yeah. Bradjication segment is proudly brought to you by USA Credit Repair. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to comment on it, I'm like... I knew you were going to comment on the beard, so I beat you to it. <laughs> USA Credit Repair is our I'm proud like... partner here. Why don't you tell them a little bit about USA Credit Repair? Squeeze? I think you uh, froze. Uh, so new team, people really need to start looking into it. I, I did? No, I you're, okay Jamaica. you're okay now. Okay. All right. They unmuted me now. All right. So basically it's a new year. You know, everyone should be looking into their finances, especially with the fact that interest rates are going to be on the rise real soon. We want everyone to call usacreditrepairinc.com. Get yourself a free consultation. Find out what your credit scores are, but not only that, find out what's affecting it. Find out what's hurting your credit score. Find out what the burning issues are. I just read something about squeeze getting lambasted for using the same joke for 20 years, burning issues. And some of us do have burning issues when it comes to our credit. So call right now. The number is 1-800-872-7177. That's 1-800-872-7177. Call usacreditrepairinc.com and tell them that we sent you. 1-800-872-7177. All right, Brad, let's get back to the show, man. All right, 1-800-529-5465. That was USA Credit Repair. We got Reggie from Brooklyn hanging out in Brooklyn. Reggie. Yeah, hello, good morning. Hi, Reggie, how are you? Hey, Reggie, yeah, how you I'm calling. I'm okay. I'm calling. I, okay, I've good. been arrested twice, okay? Right. Wow. I fight for my citizenship. The first time was between me and my wife, but there was no case. I didn't see the judge. They let me go the same night, and they tell me there is no case. How long ago was that? Mm, that was like uh, almost four or five years ago. Okay, what was the second arrest? Uh, the, the, the second time was it, it was beaten. It was beaten at three months span time. The second time was me when well, she ended up cheating. So me and the guy end up having a tussle. I went to court. He didn't show up. They the, the, So you they you've, had, the you've case. had two arrests in the last five right. years that were both dismissed, both yeah. for fighting or domestic violence or something like yeah. that. Yeah. How did you get your green yeah. card? How did you get your green card? To my wife. Okay. Are you with her now? Yeah, we still, we, no, we're not together, we're but not we together. don't divorce. Okay, so if you're divorced, you got to, I assume your citizenship was denied because you've had two arrests. One was for domestic violence, which they take very seriously. The other was for some sort of fight or assault or whatever it may be. You got to, even though you're not deportable, even though the cases were dismissed against you, you got to be able to prove good moral character. When you have two arrests in the five-year period, it's going to become a difficult haul to do. I'm not saying you can't do it. If you want to be 100% oh, right. safe, uh, uh, okay. if you want to but, be... No, 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 but what I'm saying... What? But, but, but what I'm saying is that I did the fingerprint and everything. I didn't go to the interview yet, so I don't know what they're going to do when well, I go to the interview. Either, I ain't get the interview yet. You got, well, you, A, what you should do is have an attorney with you. you got to be able to prove your person a good moral character. 
okay? Mm. My concern for you is they're going to deny you and they're going to say these two arrests in the five-year period show you don't have good moral character. I'm not saying you're a bad person. Mm. I'm just saying that's yeah. what they're going to say. Yeah. And you have to be ready for mm. it and you got to be able to counter it and say, no, I am a good person. I am a person of good moral character. Here's the evidence, mm. whatever it may be, okay? And you're going to need an attorney there to help you with that. So hold on one second, okay? I one eight hundred five two nine five four six five. One eight hundred five two nine five four six five. Ladies and gentlemen, remember you are on Facebook right now, watching us on Facebook Live. Share the page. Share it to at least twenty of your friends. Let's go to another call here at one eight hundred five two nine five four six five. Hello, Carlton in Danbury, Connecticut. By the way, Carlton, uh, we are going to be going up squeeze. I don't know if you know this or not, but you're going to be jumping in my car with me in the next week or two. We're going to be having our grand oh, opening, our grand oh, opening shoot. show in Hartford, Connecticut. On Congress Street, we've just opened up our office, Sparn Bernstein office in Hartford, Connecticut, which is near Danbury, Connecticut, I presume. Carlton, how yes. are you? Mm -hmm. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I just have one question to ask, really. I'm a citizen of the United States, but um, my daughter is here and um, a visiting visa, and um, she overstayed on it. Can I file for her? Who overstayed on it? My daughter overstayed on her visa. Can I file for her? Uh, yeah, you can file for her. But if she's gonna, over 21, she's going to be six, seven years. And um, and the six, seven years, you're going to, she's going to wait here. She's going to get nothing. Then she's going to have to do a provisional waiver, go home and come back. Okay, so it take up to seven years. Correct. But go, but, go, but go do it because it's better than doing nothing. Okay. All right. Okay. Hold on one second. We can help. All right, let's go to... All right, once again, folks. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Let me give out that important number, 1-800-529-5465. The law office of Spawn Bernstein is open six days a week, ladies and gentlemen. You can catch us right here live at nine, live at noon, each and every single weekday. Let's go to the other one, right? Lloyd in Atlanta, Georgia. Lloyd. Yeah, how are you doing? How are you? I'm doing great. What's going on? I have a uh, question. I've been married almost two here. Uh, I'm going through a real uh, abuse relationship. Me and I have been like back and forth mm -hmm. out of state. And now I'm back and try to work it out, but it only getting worse and worse. What's the abuse? Uh, being attacked two times. Attacked? Yeah. What do you mean attacked? Physically attacked? I've been, you have to call the police? Yeah, my wife attacked me with a knife. Why would you go back to her if she attacked you with a knife? That's ridiculous. Yeah, well, well you know, you always, you know, believe in second chances and people change. I don't believe in second. Like I don't believe in second chances after somebody tries to kill me. <laughs> that yeah, one is a knife involved. That one is a knife involved. Yeah, but after been talking to like parents and parents, you know, you know, you, you take advice and you, right. you move along and you try to. Okay, do, so, you then, know, so did you ever have to call the police on her? No, no. Did you go to the hospital? Did you go to the? Did you go to the hospital? No, I didn't get any injury or that, uh -huh. or anything like that. She just kind of brandished it, like kind of waved it around. Yeah, I just wave it off and I leave. See. Okay. Yeah, so your question, so your question so, is now uh, you want to file as an abused spouse? Yeah, or, or if I do um, file an abuse back, would I be able to still apply for a green card? or? Yes, that's the, abu the abuse case is applying for your green card, applying for your work permit. Applying for the green card. You gotta prove this stuff happened. Okay? You gotta prove that you were physically abused, you had extreme emotional uh, abuse to you. Obviously, if the woman's waving a knife around or even tries to stab you, that's pretty good evidence that there's abuse. Um, yep. And then you gotta prove it's a real marriage. You file your adjustment application, you get your work permit in 90 days, and you go for an interview in a little over a year, and you gotta prove all this stuff. As long as you prove it, you get a green card. Yeah, but she, what the problem is, she, she got the marriage license. And I can't get a hold of it. The you marriage, don't want to release it to so, me. So what? You know who has? Nice, you know nice who will release it to you? The state yeah. where you got married will release it yeah, to you. Yeah, exactly. That doesn't mean anything. Oh, so Every document. Where'd you get replaced. married? Where'd you get married? Um, um, Fulton. In New York. Fulton County Courthouse. Oh, no, in, that's in Georgia. In, that's in Atlanta. In Atlanta, yeah. Georgia. Guess what? Yes. Going back to the Civil War. All the way up to the present time, the state of Georgia has every marriage on file. You just apply to them and get a certificate. We go. can help you. Hold on one second. That should not be stopping you. Hold on one second. 
Okay. All right. So, Once again, folks, go on. So, Squeeze, we want to get back to Anna because we have some more questions on Facebook. I know you want to give out the number and you also want to talk a little bit about USA Credit Repair. <coughs> I'll let you take over. I apologize. Thank you so much. Yes. All right. Once again, folks, you're in tune to the Brad and Squeeze Show. Remember, the same number that you're calling, 1-800-529-5465, happens to be the number for the law offices of Spahn Bernstein. 1-800-529-5465. And still share. Share, 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 share. People can see the show even afterwards. But let's go to Anna in Miami right now. She's got a few more questions on our Facebook page, Brad and Squeeze. Let's see what she's got. Anna. Hello again. All right. Hey. And double feature with Anna. How are you? Double All right, so, yeah. so um, I want to apologize to Kay Sammy for reading her question incorrectly. Ah. She actually meant concurrent filing. What was the After question? I don't remember what the first question was, so repeat it to me. After spouse's citizenship is established, how long would it take for the other spouse to get through? Okay, so you're going to file an adjustment application. It will take about nine months. Rose Francis, Brad, every time I travel, I'm asked, how did I get my green card by immigration officers? Feels kind of uncomfortable each time. Is this normal? No. Obviously, there's some sort of, uh, you know, it's not a red flag per se. There's no such thing as somebody with a red flag, but that's like kind of like the lingo that everyone understands. There's something in the lookout system when you come in, when you come into the country that, that the immigration officer is asking you about. So what you can do, and yes, it does make you uncomfortable. You feel like you've done something wrong. So what you can do is we can help you write Washington, D.C. and say, hey, WTF, what's going on every time I uh, travel? So, and then hopefully they'll take that out of the lookout system for you. And Squeeze, you know what WTF is, right? Yeah. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. You just looked <laughs> at me like, like in a blank stare. I didn't know if you knew what that meant or not. Uh, I know what it meant. Okay, good. All right. Roseanne Miller. Brad, I filed for my sister in 2010. The application was approved, but my sister passed away last March. Can her un four underage kids get their green cards to come to the USA? Uh, unfortunately, no. If they were in the United States, the answer would be different. But if they're outside of the United States, if the main beneficiary passes, then that's the end of the case. If they were in the United States... You could, they, they could have completed the case even though the main beneficiary unfortunately passed away. Now, if they are under 16 you, and you're a U.S. citizen, which I assume you are because you filed for your sister, um, they can, uh, you can do orphan petitions for them. Bring them up as orphans and adopt them. How about that? That's a good idea. How about that? That's the reason, that, my daughter that's the reason why you got to farm birds, Steve. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead, Adam. Sorry about that, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Shanette Scott, my daughter will be 21. Can she start filing for me, and how long would it take? Your daughter's 21. Can she? Yes, she can file for you, assuming you made a legal entry into the United States. It'll take about nine months. It's an adjustment, the same amount of time as doing a marriage case. And that was the last question. But before I go, I want to um, tell people in Spanish mm -hmm. que si tienen alguna pregunta y no hablan inglés, Pueden escribir sus preguntas en español y yo se la dirijo a Brad en inglés. La única, él la va a responder en inglés, pero yo, yo trataré de um, traducirla lo más que yo pueda. Muy bien. <laughs> well, just, well, well, hang out here one second. Let's all speak to Jackie together. We have one more call before we got to leave and we'll all say goodbye together. Hold on one second. Let's speak to Jackie. Jackie. Hi, Brad. Hi, how are you? Say hello to Anna, too. Hey, how you doing? Anna's Hi, hanging Anna. out with us. Hi, Jackie. Hello, <laughs> how are Jackie. you all doing? Good, good. What's up? Okay, I have a question here. Okay, so I have my 10-year green card since 2015. Right. Can I apply for my citizenship now? How did you get your green card? Through marriage. Are you with your husband? Yes, we are. What, mo what month did you get it? December 2015. Okay. Anna, do you know the answer to this? She got her green card through her marriage. You're not a lawyer, but I'm going to put you on the spot. She got her green card uh -oh. through marriage in December of 2015. When could she file for her citizenship? Brad, you really put me on the spot right there. And you have no idea. <laughs> she, she, she could do I it don't 90, know. 90 days before she, the three-year anniversary days. of her getting okay. her green card. 
So she can't. She can file sometime in October of 2018, Jackie. October 2018. Yes, right. 90 days before the three-year anniversary of you getting your green card. You got it in 2005, December 2015. December. No, not the two-year. The 10-year I got in 2015. Oh, oh when did you get the two-year? 2012? 2013. Oh, go, go file your citizenship. Mazel tov. Okay. All thank right. You. All right. All right. Thank Brad, you I have much. two more questions. Uh, okay, we got to go quickly. We've got yeah. about 30 seconds. All right. Dwight, I have a question. How long would, would, would they give me to file for my I-751 waiver? How long is it the It takes extension? about 18 months. All right. Um, Keisha, can two persons with the same sur surname get, get married in order to file for a green card? Yes, as long as they're not kissing brothers and sisters. You can be kissing cousins, but not kissing brothers and sisters. <laughs> all right all right there it is right, thank you, you very go. much anna first week there on the Brad and squeeze show very good very good we got to get well, out of here you. we're gonna be we'll back at 12 o'clock with squeeze hopefully with anna hopefully with brad oh i said i'm never gonna do this again that's it all right we'll see you at 12 thanks for all watching all right the proceeding was informational only and not specific legal advice consult an attorney about your individual situation Prior results do not guarantee a similar outcome in the future. To make an appointment with the Sparn Bernstein Law Firm located at 225 Broadway in New York City, call 1-800-529-5465. That's 1-800-529-5465. Easily remembered, 1-800-L-A-W-L-I-N-K. That's 1-800-LAWLING. Once again, make a call to 1-800-529-5465. And of course, link up with the law offices of Sparn Bernstein located at 225 Broadway on the fifth floor. If I were you out there, make the call, make the link, make the connection, make it Spar and Bernstein. 1-800-LAWLING. That's 1-800-529-5465.